Okay, folks. As promised, I'm going to go into the root. How to gather the root of the, the pistol. Um, sometimes, you know, if, if it's a bigger plant, I go ahead and I'll cut off the stems like I did on the first video. This one's a smaller plant. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm in a, in a bit of a hurry this evening because I'm mushroom hunting and uh, it's starting to get dark. So, uh, if it was a bigger plant, I'd go ahead and I'd gather, gather what I needed off the stems, but uh, this isn't the case. So, one thing you could do, you could dull your knife and cut around, cut all the leaves. Well, I ain't about dulling my knife. So, all I do is simply take, take my size 10 boot and kick all the leaves off. Pretty simple. Now, what I'm left with is the root right here. You can either take a digging stick or a, a small trowel. Pick this one up at Walmart for 99 cents. Great piece of kit. Anyway, just simply dig around it. Breaking loose the little roots. Until I get to that, that nugget that I'm looking for there.
see from the sink here. I have a few more to go, some of which are rather long, others that are pretty short. Uh, but uh, I'll clean these up and then we'll go over the rest. <coughs> well, now I've got them all prepped, or basically appealed, I guess. And as you can see, it, it yielded a little bit. I didn't take my time, so I could have got a lot more, but I was getting frustrated with it. But as you can see, I got plenty here for a decent meal. I did use a potato peeler for parts of it. Um, some I just used a knife. They varied. But uh, anyway, I got a couple cups of water in here, and I could just put them in there whole, but they don't fit in the pot very easily, so I'm going to cut them up a little bit, nothing too extravagant. Just to make them easier to cook and eat. As you can hear, they're pretty crunchy like a carrot. Finish chopping these up and then we'll put on the stove and cook her up. Okay, I got the Coleman stove fired up here because my wife doesn't like it when I cook wild edibles in the house usually because she doesn't care for them. But anyway, got it fired up here, got the grease pot on there, got the uh, thistle root in there. Now I'm going to add a little bit of spice to it, maybe some salt. That's my little uh, spice kit I made up here. Just keep uh, a couple items in there, you know, pepper, seasoning, salt, garlic, salt, cinnamon for the bannock, and uh, normal salt. Some bouillon cube, cubes, some tomato bouillon, chicken bouillon, a little bit of everything. Anyway, so put a little bit of salt in there. garlic powder. gets to a, a rolling boil, I'll try to let it boil for a good 15 minutes to soften them up. Put a cover on your pot and it always boils faster. Something to remember. Well, they've been going for about 15 minutes. Uh, they don't really change color much. I mean, not like a potato or nothing. They get a little softer, but not much. They just get uh, more palatable. They're not bad. They're stringy. Just like most roots. But, there's a lot of copper hydrates in them. It doesn't take much to gather them. It takes a little bit to uh, to prep them, but other than that, I mean, they're they're pretty tasty.
We'll get some out here. Um, the way I like to eat them usually not really isn't just plain like this. They're just kind of bland. Um, like I said, there are a lot of starches and, and carbohydrates in them, so they're good good for energy. But um, usually I'll use them as a filler. You know, if I if I got some meat along or something like that, you know, it's kind of like a potato dish. But they uh, they soften up pretty good. They're not bad. They're not bad fried either. Usually I boil them first and then I'll fry them. And, you know, get a little oil on them, a little butter. And they're even better. But uh, that's how I prepare, cook, and consume thistles. So I'm going to go eat these. You guys have fun.